Well, we can always disagree on where we've come from and where we're going, but there's one thing we can't disagree on. We're all going there together. <laughs> this blue boat earth is our vehicle to wherever we're going. And I would have to believe that if there is any kind of intelligent source in the universe, that we are going to a greater expansion of love, that we are going to a greater expansion of life, of adventure. We're on this adventure together. And I always wonder, if we're on this beautiful adventure together, why are we fighting about it? Why is there a disconnect? Everybody wants to drive. No, God is driving the boat. <laughs> Relax and enjoy the ride. <laughs> Stop trying to do God's job and drive the boat. We're going to hit an iceberg or something that way. And then, of course, when we hit the iceberg, some of you will run around trying to arrange the deck chairs on the Titanic. Right to the very end, you're trying to control the universe. You're trying to control everything. Isn't it a much better idea to allow this infinite source of wisdom, this infinite source of intelligence, to guide your life, to have trust in that source? One, you know, um, I have to give uh, props over here to our friend Connie Farley, because, you know, one time I was asking her about her health, and she goes, I'm not worried about it. Everything has shown up for me so far in life. Why should it change now? Everything has worked out just fine. And I would say, in my case, not just fine, better than I expected. It's always better than I can imagine, because I'm giving it over to the source of infinite wisdom and infinite love. And I think that's where our healing lies. Today I want to talk about something, and that's how we're all connected. I want to talk about the idea that when we are healed, when I am healed individually, I'm not healed alone. And I want to demonstrate how our healing spreads out, extends to other people, and how we're connected through the co-founder, I would say the actual founder, of the unity movement, Myrtle Fillmore. Charles Fillmore gets all the credit, but it was really Myrtle's experience of healing that started the unity movement and has touched thousands of people. When Myrtle, was in 1886, was in a lecture by a metaphysician called E.B. Weeks, she heard him say this statement here, I am a child of God, and therefore I do not inherit sickness. That one sentence set a fire in her heart and in her mind. Wow, I'm a child of God. I do not inherit sickness. Now, at the time when she heard this statement, she was dealing with the major sickness of her time, which was tuberculosis. And I read some pretty gruesome statistics about tuberculosis and how many people died during the 1800s. And in some cases, it it was over 80% of the people who were diagnosed like Myrtle who wouldn't make it. And so they obviously gave Myrtle the terminal sentence. You're going to live about four years maximum. So in those four years, what did she do? Instead of focusing on, well, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. They told me I'm going to die, tuberculosis. Everybody goes, I've got this amount of time, I'm going to count the days going to count the hours, and then, of course, you know, if they told me, it must be true. She didn't say that. What did she say? She said, I am a child of God. I do not inherit sickness. I am going to affirm that. And she decided to affirm in every part of her body that she was a child of God, that that part of her body is imbued with the inherent wisdom and intelligence of the universe, and that that each and every part, each and every organ was intelligent enough to heal itself. And by these affirmations, she healed herself and the unity movement was born. I'd like to talk a little bit about her story because it's really fascinating. 
Oh, I'm going I'm to go. I'll get back to that. Hold on a second. Let's stick on Myrtle for a minute. Myrtle Fillmore was afflicted with tuberculosis at a young age and spent many years believing she was incurably weak and sickly until she heard this statement. That's why it's so important that we repeat the truth, that we teach the truth, and that we affirm the truth. Myrtle learned of her innate potential for divine healing through the use of affirmative prayer, and she began to regularly affirm this statement, I am a child of God and therefore do not inherit sickness. Over time, she was healed of the, of the tuberculosis that had threatened her life. Myrtle was so excited about her discovery that she began working with others in need of healing. Eventually, she and her husband, Charles Fillmore, pioneered the spiritual healing support system now known as Silent Unity, a 24-hour prayer ministry that's been in operation consistently and constantly 24-7 for the last 125 years. There has always been somebody on the other end of that line, always been somebody physically available to pray with you, to affirm the truth with you, 24-7 for 125 years. And it's still operating, of course, today. The light is still burning. And Myrtle lived to be 86 years old. She lived another 40-some years, not just four and the following is a manuscript that I found in the Unity Archives on, on a website called uh, truthunity.net. If you guys ever want any information and writings about the, from the Fillmores and other Unity writers, it's an incredible resource. So these are some of her affirmations and a little bit of her story. The light of God revealed to us that thought came to me first. The light of God has revealed to us. So what has the light of God revealed to you sitting here today in your life? Let's just contemplate that for a minute. What has the light of God revealed to me? That's what we are called to share So the light of God revealed to Myrtle that life was of God, that we were inseparably one with the source, and that we inherited from the divine and perfect Father. What that revelation did to me at first was not apparent to the senses, but it held my mind above negation. Your mind is always negating, your human mind is negating your divinity. What we're healing, what I am attempting to heal in my life and, and with us today is that sense of negation of our divinity, that sense of disconnect from our humanity and our divinity. There's this disconnect. And it gets so disconnected that we even forget our humanity, that we even forget that we are on the same earth, that we are on the same boat home. That wherever we're going, we're going there together. So to heal that sense of disconnect, Myrtle had the revelation that we are inseparably one with the source, with the source of all wisdom, all knowledge, all power, all love, and of course, all healing. And her revelation that we are one with the source of all healing healed her body. And she came forth and presented that idea in a ministry of prayer with others. And others began to be healed as well. It held her mind above negation. She could no longer deny that she was a divine and perfect child of God and had the power to heal herself. As you have the power to heal anything in your life. So she began to claim her birthright and to act as though she believed herself to be a child of God filled with life. In her words, I gained, and others saw that there was something new in me. They asked me to share it, and I did. Others were healed and began to study. 
My husband continued his business at first and took little interest in what I was doing. But after a time, he became absorbed in the study of truth too. We consecrated ourselves to the Lord and kept doing daily that which we felt we had to do and were led to do. We began to prosper a little at a time. Our health continued to improve and the unity movement continued to grow because others would come and they too would engage in this affirmative prayer practice and their lives would be transformed as well. And today there are thousands of unity churches and spiritual centers around the world. And I believe that this raising of our consciousness, this gathering together in the truth that we are inseparable from the source of all healing, love, and power is really what is healing humanity. And of course, as in Myrtle's case, it, was, it may not be immediately apparent to the senses because you're, you're viewing it from a past reference. You're viewing it from the reference of negation of your divinity, not the affirmation of it. And so that's the training that happens in all spiritual practice is the affirmation of our divinity. So when someone says, I have no need at all of sickness, that's when the healing begins. Healing is accomplished the instant the sufferer sees no value in pain. I've had enough pain. If any of you have read Lily's book, right in the introduction, it's an amazing story. She said, I just had enough pain. And I said, one of us has to go. It's either going to be the pain or me. And so I decided the pain's going. I packed its bags and I threw the suitcases out the door and said goodbye to the pain. And that's what you have to do if you want healing. I offered healing to somebody once, and she says, I don't need healing. I've got insurance. <laughs> Isn't that the state of humanity right now? I mean, come on. You don't think there's a need for a little spiritual higher consciousness? A little spiritual education? <laughs> I don't need healing. But everything, yeah, I know. It is, that's a true story. I didn't make that joke up. Everything is connected. So that is why when I'm healed, I'm not healed alone. That is why I can focus on my own healing and not feel guilty. I can focus on my own healing and know that I'm affecting the world. I can focus on my own healing and know that I'm bringing about a, an actual change in the consciousness that we share. I can focus on my own healing, my healing the disconnect between my humanity and my divinity, bringing it together here and now. What we try to do, okay, we're all one, but what seems to separate us? Our egos, our personality, our judgments of one another, our beliefs that something is worse than some people are worse than others and and some situations are worse than others and we don't accept the moment we have a lot of beliefs that separate us but beliefs change don't they beliefs change all the time so what i'm talking about here is affirming a truth that goes beyond your belief to actual experience because the experience the true experience of the love that we share will eliminate your fears. When I'm healed, I'm not healed alone. When I'm eliminating the fear in my life, I'm not passing on that energy. You can feel the fearful energy in the United States right now because the egos, they thrive on fear. They exist by fear. They're important because of the fear. Fear is a very necessary element in keeping conflict going and keeping the whole war machine going and keeping all of the separation 
going. That has to end. A new way of looking at who I am and why I'm here has to dawn on every mind because no matter where we're going, we're going there together. Fear is a disease. It eats away at logic. It makes man inhuman. The famous singer, most of us never heard of, Marian Anderson, It's a disease, fear. But all healing is essentially the release of fear. All healing. All healing is the release of fear. We were talking about the other night that uh, sickness is anger taken out on the body. You're fearful, you're angry, and you take it out on yourself. No, I'm a holy child of God. I do not inherit sickness, and there is nothing to fear. The release of fear is your healing because it brings you freedom, and it brings you miracles. It brings you the miracles that are happening in your life. It's a shift in perception from fear to love. And I would like to see, I, I pray for everyone in leadership. I pray for everyone in, in all walks of life to shift from fear to love to begin every decision they make as one based in love. That's why I wanted to sing that song today, Love is My Decision. It's not something that just happens to you. It's not something you trip over. It's not something that you invent. But it is something you, you can decide for. And that's my prayer, that we all decide for love, that we all accept a shift in perception from fear to love. And those that we fear and those that we are angry with, let us love them. Let us love them as deeply and as strongly as we can, just as Kathy's wonderful, beautiful meditation today. So I wish you well. I wish you all the good things that life can possibly offer. I wish that all the causes of your suffering are taken or released from you voluntarily. They can't be taken away because you've decided on them. But I pray that you release all those causes of suffering. I pray that you release all that doesn't serve you any, any longer because when you start receiving the goodness of the universe, you're going to start giving it. And I can't judge someone who doesn't know how to love and give because they don't know what they don't know. We're here to teach you how to love and, and forgive and to give, right? If I'm judging and I'm angry with those people who are not loving and forgiving, I'm doing the same thing. And I become that which I was judging. I want to shift from fear to love. That's what I want in my life. So please do not feed the fears. On my way to the beach the other day, this is the sign I saw. It probably said, you know, look out for the sharks. But no, my sign says this. Please do not feed the fears. Don't buy into it. It's never true. It's always temporary. Feed the truth. Feed the love. Feed the healing. Don't feed the fears or the sharks. Don't take selfies with the seals. That, that was the sign I saw. <laughs> so we do not heal the past by dwelling there. We're only going to heal it by being fully in the present, right here, right now. Love is my decision, right here, right now. We can't go back and fix it. It's already gone. And the release of it is the healing. Being in the present and being in the decision for love, right here in the present, living fully in the present and not feeding the fears. That's where it's all happening. So you begin to heal when you just start letting go of these past hurts. Let it all go. Let the people go who wronged you. Learn to forgive yourself as well of all of your mistakes. Because in truth, there are no mistakes. In truth, everything that has occurred has led you to this moment of realization, revelation, and transformation. 
So in truth, there are no mistakes. Forgive yourself. Embrace this moment. Know that everything is perfect and the universe has lined up perfectly to bring you right to this moment where you are. I was talking about judgments earlier. And it's true. If, you're, if I'm judging people, I have no time to love them. I love that. Just get busy loving. Our practice of forgiveness, of letting go of the judgment and loving people, is the most important contribution we have to healing the world. Forgiveness, letting go. There are no mistakes. And yet the truth is what I want, and love is my decision. Nothing can stand in the way of your decision for love. Nothing can stand in your way for your decision for forgiveness and healing. I remember a long time ago uh, going to the inner city and working with children. A lot of them were, we used to do theater and dance and juggling and all kinds of fun things with kids. And, and one of our friends would take us into the city once in a while where she worked. And I remember how so many of those children were abused and they were so fearful and they were so angry. And, and they, they would at first really resist and they really lack, lash out at you and call you names and judge you and everything. And I would always say, I'm going to love you anyway. And, and they would get so mad at first, you know, but then after a while of chasing each other around the room and everything, and they would get right into it. And they were the best performers, and they were the best dancers, and the, the best poets and singers, and, and they loved it because they could channel all of that energy, all of the things that caused their little bodies to get filled up with fear and anger, they would channel it all into something creative. And that's what I want to do with my life and with all of you. We're all still little kids that have experienced a lot of hurt and anger in this world. And we need to channel it into creative love. We need to be able to know that all of that energy is still love and there are no mistakes. I can forgive myself. And that forgiveness is going to be the greatest contribution we have to healing this world because those who are healed become the instruments of healing. So you are the instrument of healing, my friends. You are the instrument of bringing the truth here. You are. You, you have to be the instrument. It's your world. You can't wait for someone else to do it. You have to be about it. And however you do it is perfect for you. Just let it grow. Let it expand. Be the peace you want to see in the world. Be the love. Be the healing. Because you are the instrument of healing only when you are healed. When you begin your healing process, that's when you bring everyone else along. Because as Myrtle said... What happened to her, people started saying, what is going on with you? This is amazing. Can I come and hang around with you? They would come and be in their living room and pray. And even her husband, it took him a little while to give up his business. It took me 40 years to give up construction <laughs> and painting. And all that. I still haven't given it up. I was helping Dave yesterday. I couldn't help myself. Dave was putting in a door in the back there. And thank you so much for that. I mean, we, get, we have all kinds of incredible people here. Uh, Charlie's one of them. We walked in today and said, how are we going to function? Charlie's not here. <laughs> we were a lot, doing a great job. <laughs> he's, he's looking at how the stars and the planets are lining up. Because they're lining up for you. They're lining up for all of us. They're lining up so that we can live in a harmonious relationship because no matter where we've been or where we're going, we're all going there together. Remember that. I love you guys. Thank you. You have been watching the message from our Sunday celebration service here at Unity on Cape Cod, providing a positive path for spiritual living. 
Please join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 147 Walton Ave, Hyannis, Mass. And visit us online at www.unityoncapecod.org.